everybody. Man, that was a good bubble. Thank you. Come on in if you're watering the halls. Thank you all so much for being out. Isn't it a beautiful day outside? Well, thanks for being inside for a few minutes. Um, we really appreciate you being here for our Art Matters talk with our National Jury Exhibition, Juror Foon Shan. Um, Foon will be talking to us in a few minutes, but I want to do, just tell you a couple things real quick. Um, one, you're sitting in our West Gallery, which is uh, half of our National Jury Exhibition. So if you go through the doorway there, maybe you've come that way, but uh, you can check out the rest of the exhibition. There's also three other solo exhibitions. So uh, off of the East Gallery, through the brick wall, uh, there's a room, a gallery with gray walls, and that's worked by Danielle Hawk, some ceramic work. It's amazing stuff to check out. There's also two galleries on our second floor with great work by Michael Bruner. Michael was the, I think, third place winner. Is that right, Michael? Thank third place winner of our National Juried Exhibition two years ago. And we invited him to come and do a show, and he's traveled from afar. Where are you from, Ken? Scooter, Illinois. <laughs> so he came from Illinois to do a show with us, and it's been great working with Michael. Um, and then there's another exhibition in our Moreland Gallery on the second floor that's worked by Robert Cantor. Some really great paintings up there. So take some time, wander throughout the building, uh, check out what we have going on. Um, you can grab a magazine as well. Our summer magazines are in. So it'll tell you everything that we have coming up from programs to art talks to exhibitions to classes, summer classes. Uh, even bus trips. We've got some good bus trips planned. Um, so there's lots happening. So just come, uh, you know, check those things out and come hang out with us during all these, all this good stuff. Um, take some time to wander in our gift gallery as well. The other thing I want to mention really quick is um, we record these talks for YouTube. Uh, so if you know somebody that would like to hear it um, but wasn't able to make it, you can point them in that direction. It'll be up after a little while. We've got to do some i got to edit all my ums out and all that stuff. <laughs> and there's lots of content from the last couple of years on there, so you can check out a lot of great talks and, and stuff. Um, I, think, I think that's it. I, I love the National Jury Exhibition because it gives us a taste kind of of what artists are making throughout the country. We, have, we had submissions from over, I think, 18 or 19 states. Uh, over 500 pieces were submitted from, let's see, over, over 170 artists. Yes. Uh, and there's, so from the work that was chosen, I think there's 12 or 13 states kind of represented in the exhibition. So it gives you a little bit of a taste of kind of the temperature of art right now throughout the country, what people are up to in their own disciplines. Um, and it just makes for a very vibrant, uh, unique, and uh, eclectic, body of work every time we do it, so I love seeing it. So take some time and, and wander around and check things out. Um, I reached out to Foon Sham, our juror, a while back, and he very graciously agreed to be our juror this year, and I think that he chose a great work for the exhibition. I'm so pleased with it, and I'm really excited to hear from Foon today. So I'm going to read his bio, and then I'm going to get out of the way, and once he's done talking, we will we'll talk about all you prize winners. Before I do that, if you're an artist in the National Jury Exhibition, would you raise your hand? Man, thank you for being here. Let's give them a hand. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your talent with us. We, we really appreciate it. Foon Sham is a sculptor and professor at the University of Maryland College Park. With wood as his primary medium, he has sawed, cut, laminated, stacked, carved, and assembled a multiplicity of soft and hard wood in organic and geometric forms from small to massive pieces. His art echoes his personal, feeling to, his personal feelings for nature, disaster, and the particular, and particular environment. Born in Macau and raised in Hong Kong, Sham received a BFA from the California College of Arts and Crafts and an MFA from Virginia Commonwealth University. Since 1980, he has had over 40 solo exhibitions. He's participated in over 115 group exhibitions, 
in galleries and museums in the United States and across the world, would you give a round of applause for Foon Sham? Wow, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for standing. <laughs> you know, hopefully we can get some seats for them sometime. But uh, 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 first of all, thank you, Corey, for inviting me to be a juror. If you had told me there were 175 people applying for three, 500 pieces, I might turn down the job. <laughs> there was a lot of a lot of work has been you know submitted, and uh, it, it was a difficult decision that I have to make. But at the same time, you know, congratulate to those who are in. But at the same time, those people who did not get selected, I would not say the word rejected. I would say the word not being selected. It just it's just you know part of the process, you know. So uh, I. I understand how it feels like I enter show many times. I also get not selected and also <laughs> somewhat I get into a competition. In fact, there's a project I enter in the Frederick area that I did not get selected. So I know exactly how it feels like. So, uh, but at the same time, you know, good to feel, really feel good to be selected out of so many people who enter the show. Uh, so that is not a selected theme. So it was based on my personal you know, respond to your work, your sensibility, your color choices, the pay attention to details, you know, idea behind the work. And, uh, and then uh, uh, I know some of the people might know me, you know, I just bumped into a, a former, you know, uh, f at that time was MFA student in Maryland. Then I just had such a nice reunion to see you here uh, and in the show as well. So that was a nice feeling. So, uh, so I was also asked to, to present my work which you become the juror now, okay? <laughs> you can say yes and no to it in your heart, and I would, you know, be glad to hear your opinion as well, okay? Uh, any question before I start? Okay. Uh, so I just be select, select some work that I really give you, you ask me, you know, in the statement, say, say a little bit about my work, about the history and the, you know, the process, all that. I'll, throw in all that in, and I will end it about 45 minutes. If I couldn't finish the lecture, what I present here, that's okay, right? But that's not a particular requirement to finish it all. So let me know if you have any question, just raise your hand, I'll be glad to answer it right away, okay? Uh, any question before I start? No? Okay, let's go. Okay, I know a lot of, uh, uh, okay. The piece you, s you see here is, it's my first sculpture I ever made in my life, okay? So I was, uh, came here as a foreign student, you know, in California, and uh, wanting to become a textile designer. Why? So I can go home and have a, make a, have a job, so I can make a living, because, you know, paying overseas tuition to go to UNSC for art is phenomenal. It's 10 times more than I have to pay where, where, my, where my country, come, where I came from, Hong Kong. And that time there was no really, not many fine art schools, so I end up choosing, you know, USA to pursue my art. But at the same time, parents said, make sure you get, you know, do something, then you can get a job, which is 99, 99 cents. Our Asian parents will be forcing the kids to do computer science, right? Computer science, business, or engineering. Right, so you bump into College Park, you bump into any Asian student, there are only three majors, they are there. <laughs> <laughs> all my students are Asians, you know, from Asian country are very mostly in graphic design or the new media called immersive media, which is combining computer and uh, art. So uh, people who are Asian still background, who are following my track, are impossible to find. It's almost nobody wants to pursue that or has the courage or the support to do it. So anyway, I came here. So I came here, then I, I had to take the required classes, right, foundation, and I had to take, you know, 3D was all filled up, then I had to take Sculpture 1. So, so California, the way they, teach, they taught Sculpture was quite different than I teach it now. They say, well, first project, self-portrait. Any size, any media, anything you want. See you in three weeks. <laughs> I was, I was mad. I say, I, I, I came all the way here, paid, spent all the money, and then you gave me no instruction. And then, uh, and then the, what, what happened was, was really hard for me. I was running and walking around, do not have no clue. Give me some instruction. Give me something to copy, which I was trained to copy for painting. The Chinese way they teach art, they still do maybe somewhere. Uh, 
used to copy paintings every day for, I did for four years. From 12 to 16, I would train under a master painter to paint how to mix paint, perspective, still life, you name it, you know, uh, landscape, all that. So that is the first one that I have to came up with by my head, from my heart. What, who am I? What I want to do, what I present. So I have no technique training. I have no idea what to do, nothing to copy. So I came up with something that where I live, there's a guy who was a carpenter who have a bandsaw cutting all these wood scrap on the floor. So I pick up all the pieces that he had <laughs> discarded and then put together, look at my photo who I am and put this work together. And I was scared to death that was right or wrong. I have no idea. So I present the critique three weeks came. I, everybody asked for their work, the professor asked for the work to present on the podium and I say, well, could you come here to the back room, to my back here? Here's my piece, I show it to him. <laughs> so I would, don't, don't show it to the class, I don't know where this right, don't, just don't show it, just don't show it, don't show it. No, 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 he put it right to the front of the class with about that many people, what, 15 students, right? And boom, everything. Whoa, I was so scared. I almost wanted to run away. My face turned red because I never exposed my first piece of sculpture, which I have no clue whether it's right or wrong. I do not know what it's based on, but based just what I did, right? I could come up with. But then I look at the faces of the people were really quite positive. You know, they were, they were happy faces. That some word came out, you know, they say it's nice, neat, and marvelous, you know. What's marvelous means? I, <laughs> my language was limited, so I couldn't understand. But the same by the face, I think ought to be a good word. So, <laughs> so that turned into two things to me is the appreciation of work that I do come from my heart, come from my soul, that I did not copy Monet painting or a calendar or a piece of magazine they put it on the left-hand side of how they teach you. Here's what you do, copy, trace it, and do it. So that came from myself, nobody matching it, no particular artist to copy from then allow me to make a piece of my own. That satisfaction, that kind of emotional response, that kind of praises and acceptance drive me for the last, next 40 years to make art. I want it again. I want that feeling again. I want to be accepted. I want to be appreciated. I want my originality came out. So that started it. What it does also show me to me is that my originality is still, I'm still doing little pieces of wood, put it together. In a lot more massive manner, but a lot more trained, a lot more engineered, a lot more crafted, a lot more carefully calculated. This piece is falling apart because they was never glued the right way. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't teach you, they just say do it on your own. That's how they taught it, how they, how they have done it. So anyway, all right, sorry, okay, so let's go to the next one. Then I get to, you know, this is when I get to Maryland, you know, 1997, Cynthia was around. And, uh, you know, I, I taught, since then I've been teaching in Maryland for a few years, since 88, and uh, so I got my first sabbatical, <laughs> which is a great feeling that you're allowed to have do some work on your own, on the time, then I have some little money support to buy enough two by four to make a big piece. So I want to do something big, you know, because I was influenced by an artist named Christo. Anybody named Christo? Who does giant wrapping buildings, islands? rivers and rocks and the gate in New York, all that. Okay, I was inspired by him and said, whatever I make will not be too big after Crystal. Never. You can't compare with a guy who makes Rebel Island, right? So anyway, so I want something to a big enough to enclose people in it. Do, do you bring you be part of my work, you know, by, by using my method? small pieces of wood that I can handle. I'm a small guy, as you can see, not that big. But, <laughs> but, but then you know, I repeat it enough, it will get bigger, it could be, be, be an enclosure. So this is a piece I built uh, in, uh, for the exhibition down in Georgetown, George Washington University in, in, in downtown. So this is, so I, <laughs> these, were, these were my students at the class. And then, then I say, can you guys go in and see how many I can pack in? <laughs> my whole class can go in. And I also have to make a door you see the arrow here or no? This, you see my arrow here? The door has to be closed because then if I don't, uh, okay, 
the door had, had to be at door because that you know they worry about you know what they worry about in Washington as you know they are homeless people which I care for them but they don't have place to go. This is a perfect place for overnight stay, perfect because they can go in there and stay away. So I have to lock it in the gallery theater. Have to lock it at five o'clock. Corey, will be, you have to lock it at five o'clock every day so that people can't get in. So anyway, and so back to here. So the I, I designed it as a swing gate. You can swing it like a New York subway kind of entry right here. Let me let me stop it so I don't have to chase it here. Hold it here. Okay, let me see if I can handle this. You keep moving. Uh, so you can close it in and out. But anyways, that. Then uh, I'm missing a slide here. Hmm. So the interior was I don't know where the slide go, but the interior was inside. You can go inside and see the interior was the beautiful sky, right, with clouds and look like just the globe inside. But I I'm missing that slide, but I, I will find it anyway. So then the next piece I was 99 and I was asked to uh, compete for a show called Pier, Navy Pier Sculpture in Chicago. Anybody from Chicago? So this piece was installed in Chicago, where you can see downtown there, and then, you know, this time I have double, you know, kind of vessel form. You can go in and out from one side to another, and double entry, one side enter here, and you go straight to the other side, and with double side light opening. There, the interior is all gone, huh? Anyway, yeah, so. Those are my... Those are in the interior shot here, and that's the skylight here. And as you all been to our school, we talk about negative spaces, right? So this is the, the space between the two vessel forms and generate a little piece of blue color. Guess what that come from? People in photography will always capture these nice little shots. Right? No? Number one is blue is water and that's Lake Michigan <laughs> because you're looking at so it becomes the negative shape of a kind of a vessel form also generated by these two giant vessel form and then forming a little vessel form and then that's the what I call it, the liquid the water yeah. mm -hmm. all right so that is uh, ah, this is the slide I want to show you the interior yeah when I first saw that that is something I never planned when I built that big giant basket piece right but then when I see this, I want to change the next interior, what it looks like, the next one interior. Like. And I also realized people in photographer who are great photographer here, I thought people, you know, sometimes you take image, you say you have a second chance to take another photo. No, that clouds move so quickly. <laughs> the next time I took is a different picture. So uh, anyway, so this weaving pattern is another thing inside the interior. Uh, also, I like the really the interior pattern of this sculpture that provide when I just build the exterior, which is a form, but then the interior also provide me what I call a second reading of the work. Many of your pieces I chose have that level. I want the piece to engage me first and then trap me in. I want to look for a second chapter and then if there's something for me to engage in, then I will keep going and going and if you can hold me on long, you mostly get selected <laughs> because I want to read your work more and more. And I came in yesterday and I look at the work in detail again. So that was pretty helpful. So, so this weaving pattern become my signature work because they are actually look like weaving, but they are not weaving because they are discontinued. Weaving, as you know, are continued piece of material, continuing all the way around. But these actually are discontinued, cut the block. So they generate the weaving pattern that it is kind of a kind of uh, illusion that looked like they were weaving. So, okay, I'll take you somewhere else. Uh, uh, we got to sometime when we a college professor, we got to call this supporting summer grant to go to other places that we propose to do, to do artistic research or artistic work or project. So I, I applied for a place called Nordic Artist Center in Norway. It's a gorgeous place. Don't worry, this is the nearby place, the landscape. It's just spectacular landscape where there are not many people. The whole country <laughs> has no, whole country has four million people. So the only thing you can find people, you mostly can find sheep. You know, sheep, you know, the white sheep. 
and then they are blocking the road because there's nobody driving. So you have to go there and get away into the ship to kind of like horn them away and then go around. But anyway, you can see really people there, but the landscape are quiet, the water are not moving, and uh, just reflecting beautiful landscape there. So I was totally inspired. At the same time, I was on a support grant to do artistic work outside the country uh, in Norway. I was inspired by this. Now, artists, we uh, go to studio and work, sometimes we need inspiration, right, and stimulants. So travel to me is one of those inspiration I got. Uh, sometimes you get reading books, research, you know, or, or, or you know, study on certain topic, or more people do narrative work, you know, history, all that. But I lean to travel. One thing that inspired me is this rooftop. They call tough top. It's, uh, it's the roof uh, made of grass. Traditional. This is 11th century. They kept this as a museum. This is a museum, <laughs> but they actually are houses they kept since the 11th century because the roof are made of grass. We actually put, you know, the earth and grass grow on it. And say they grow, become little plants, and they have the gutter made of reverse, the bird tree. They, they take the, the bark, right? It's like curvilinear form, and then they, they reverse and they use it as a gutter. So, Anyway, so I was inspired that then I want to do a piece inspired to that and uh, reaction to that and make this. Uh, oh, by the way, this is my studio. Aww. Don't you want to be an artist sometimes? <laughs> Instead of working in the basement in the toilet outside. So, you know. <laughs> I've been to all those, right? This, this is the I was in paradise. This every artist, five of them, each one chosen, get a studio like that and a separate house look like that. Looking at the fiat, what they call the water on their own, that you can bring your family, it's what I did, with family of two, or two bedroom, or three bedroom. Each artist have one of those. So, I was so supportive, and I feel like I was in paradise. Anyway, so I started making work. To make it brief, I doing drawings, you know, on the wall, building small pieces, pieces on the hand and ceiling, because when you're given that kind of a f support, being a full-time artist is a luxury thing. I don't know how many of you are able to call yourself full-time artist. I am not. For 40 years, I'm still teaching. It's love to be full-time artist mentality, you know. I was paid. I was paid support to go to work and full-time studio. It was great. So I'm working like crazy night and day because the day never ends in Norway. <laughs> it doesn't end. The closest you get is to 11, 12 a.m., get a little dark, and then by 2 a.m., it's all bright and you're ready to work. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, good news as an artist, this small work around uh, are all sold uh, you know, during Norway and came back. So those are another thing that artists need to have some kind of right, subst <laughs> substance support, you know, mon monetary support here to buy our material and all that. But anyway, so this is a piece finished. I finished in about a uh, month and a half. Uh, these are material that I collect, that not collect, I order material. You know, you order material in this country, you get two by four, right? You know, wood all clean and sanded in the lumber yard. When you order material in Norway, they come with the bark because they come from trees, which they do, <laughs> but the trees, if not, instead of removing all the outside skin, we, we do remove the skin, two by four, all that, and sand thinner, we did, did have bark in it. So that inspired me to make work with tree bark on it, which is that beginning, that particular, in instance, make me go there. So, uh, and then uh, that one, again, I would love interior. So this one is not calculated block. Each block is different in size, custom size in the studio to create the interior for you to walk in. But this one, you go in, you don't get out. <laughs> There's no entry. It's like a shell, right? A shell. You go in, and then you have a. I have a little stool for you that I made for you to sit down and think about yourself, what you want to be, why you're there, and contemplate. So, uh, so that was the end. Then you can, of course, get out food the same way. So, I have a question. Yeah. Do you always know where you're going with it. I mean, do you? How much of it do you? engineer beforehand? The, the large-scale yeah. Chicago pieces, yeah. those are calculated, every block calculated, so that I can dictate the form, how slanted, how curved I want. These guys are drawing, you can see the drawing on the wall. Yeah. See the drawing on the wall? They were different forms, so I kind of visualize it and how to join them, but at the same time, he's kind of a sketch markup. You, you're doing along the sketch. So in other words, 
the Chicago, those kind of pieces are like architectural work. They are blueprint to, to make it. These guys are on, judged by, each piece are judged by my, my choice and sizes and shape because the bar come in irregularly. You cannot cut another piece the same size because they look different. So I put the next one to it and I, I mix the three species together, which is rowan, oak, and uh, alder, all that tree that come from Norway. So the, each one has its own characteristic. So I mix them quite selectively. So. Okay, guess this guy was on this guy. This is my, 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 my audience. <laughs> it's not Photoshop, did not Photoshop, and it's real. So across my sculpture, across there's a building, which is uh, kind of like a rehab building. There's swimming pool in it for people to rehab. Uh, they have grass grow on the roof as well, which is a contemporary building. At that time, it was maybe a three years old building. They still keep their tradition, have grass grow on it. And they have goat living on them in July and August. Why? Only summer months because, because in the winter month, they will be frozen. Right, <laughs> so they only keep them for the you know so they can also do the haircut, do the shaving a lot, and very economical. And then 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 in the time they become dinner, or, you know, because they what happens. Yeah, anyway. So, so I'm I'm talking. About they keep four of them because four of them with just enough <laughs> manpower to do the lawn mowing, but also you know have enough grass to support them. So there it says my piece here with the grass, and echo with those real living goat uh, echo with it. So to me, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, so at the end of the day, we, my kids were there, my family were there, we did fishing. And uh, uh, very interestingly, have a, uh, but I, I work quite hard, but at the same time, you know, they, we got to spend some time to uh, have some, uh, uh, what do you call, leisure or balance our mind. And, you know, so they won't get so tangled here. Okay, another piece I want to share with you is a personal piece. Is uh, uh, some of you do have personal messages in your statements. Some of them are, are in general are kind of art processing. But this is a piece that uh, I didn't respond to the death of my my mother, who passed away in 2002 in colon cancer. You know, so cancer is one of the biggest right uh, uh, life-threatening kind of a disease in our country in the world. So, uh, but my mother also. Unfortunately, uh, died of colon cancer. So, in 2003, I was doing an exhibition in Australia. You know, the, you know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, something hit me. The memory came, and my thought, my thought about my mother, uh, who passed away, who was supposed to come to open the show in Australia. I was expecting to happen, planning that, and make sure work hard enough to work for there. And she passed away in December. So uh, that was hard, and I could not work, so I have all these two by four cut everywhere. So I decided to make a piece in response to return to my mother. Whether she would get it or not, but I'll try, you know. So I built a piece. So I make this long vessel uh, made of 101 blocks of two by four cutoffs, basically. Uh, why 101? Because she, she's, we raised as Catholics, she does gro gro grocery? Right, we do it one by one, so holy saying, you know, Hail Mary, a hundred times, and I feel that she have done it every day and so many times. So I want to return at least one hundred and one block as a symbolic return, more than hundred times, you know, to say thank you for helping me, bring me up, and taught me what I should be as a human being. So then, with a kind of curved spine. It's still, my work is somewhat abstract, not realistic, as you know. My work is not like realistically representing anything, but at the same time, that is the spine of the body, a curve, and with her, with her body, basically skeletal form. But also, long enough to look like a curve, enough to look like a vessel. Which you, when, we, when we think about people pass away, we think about they go somewhere, right? In the Catholic Church, we think they go to, we think about they go to <coughs> heaven, right? And then... Uh, but we need something to bring us there. So we, in our culture, think about a vessel and a bow is where we should take them. Uh, maybe at that time, there was no plane at that time. So. But vessel to me is a really beautiful vessel on the water and sets sail to that. And then my sister said, well, she wants to also do something like that too, but at the same time, she's not a sculptor artist. So she said, can I share that, ex that return experience to my parent, to my mother? And she said, well, 
my mother taught us how to fold origami bowls when we were little. So why don't I fold you a bowl or we fold a bowl and then we write a message to send to mom. And then she did one. And then she also is a president of a cancer society where she had members are all helping each other to cope with, you know, when people contract with cancer or who have a loved one who are dealing with fighting with cancer, you know. So they so say, why don't I let the members also share? But then, well, that will become not a piece of artwork that will become people's interact with it. But at that time, 2003, was somewhat newer than what it is now. Interaction is like everyday, you know, thing now. But uh, so we decide to, my decide to let my personal sculpture to be shared with people who are willing to share their thought and memory and think and, and, and feelings about their mother. So they, we created folding many more boats for people to write messages on them and leave it on the floor as part of my piece exhibition. So the piece start with one, two, and become 20, and then become uh, many. So that become a voyage of all these collective thoughts and memory and feelings of people who have lost loved ones in pan cancer and write a personal message in it. And this little black thing in there uh, look like a cone. So you can see the message. The black cone is made of tea leaves, Chinese tea leaves, you know, jasmine tea or, or, or oolong tea that are symbolic, I use as a symbolic representation of cure. You know, the scientists said they have antioxidant in there that would help to prevent cancer, but at the same time, I don't believe you can just drink tea and not to get cancer. I hope it's that simple. But at the same time, I use it as a symbolic symbol, you know, for cure. So I think have a sense of healing and cure in each one of them. We cast it and in with, with mixing tea leaves with glue, and then we offer each person a boat, a tea cone, and a pen for a black ink pen for you to write your messages on it. So as you see the exhibition grow, I have over show it more than this exhibition, this piece being asked for to exhibit in four countries, four continents, and over twelve times. And the last one is nearby here in the Washington County Museum in Lee Higginstown. And if you might have bumped into it, it's 2016, I have showed it for four months. And then, so, uh, so you can see the message that people written both in all languages, sometimes in Japanese, you know, Korean, English, and, uh, you know, uh, French. So you can see really simple, some of them really simple uh, messages about in memory of someone who died and Chinese languages as well, uh, just like some wishes, personal wishes, you know, to be, let's say to have a grandson or to have promotion, they become general wishes. But mostly the theme was healing for cancer. So, yeah. This is Hagerstown in the Washington County Museum near in Hagerstown. The space is big enough, so I have different kind of uh, shape that I form. This is a giant like a leaf, you know, so that you can get to it. So uh, this is a, a, a piece I did in, uh, uh, in uh, Chile, uh, San Diego, in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Mexico, I mean, not Mexico, in uh, South America, San Diego, Chile. And then I, uh, it has shown in uh, uh, Hong Kong, Australia, here, and uh, South America as well. So we have a couple of minutes to I did a video so that I want to share with you, give a few quiet moments for thanking our, our parents and my mother who gave us all the loving and care and teaching. The Vikings did something like that. The Vikings? I believe so. So there were six, six uh, particular ones, there six uh, paper vessels that were representing my six siblings, where I'm one of six. And uh, so I thought of, you know, burning is a one way to kind of symbolically, you know, give that, over that gift to 
my mother. So uh, uh, I hope the, uh, that my mother appreciate that and uh, that I, it's, a, it's become a therapy for me. Every time I do it, it makes me feel better. And I, I'm also able to share people's, uh, 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 lo you know, the feeling of loss, you know, that is very important. But anyway, okay, let's go to the, the next piece. Uh, I'm going to speed up a little bit here. Is uh, I'm also inspired by, you know, the the cliff buildings in the you know southwest you know the the Indian build net using natural stone to build the buildings, and I was asked to do exhibition in the Casson Art Center. Did anybody know in American University down in Washington D.C. Uh, sorry. So there are lights in this exhibition space is uh, and then I make a proposal to do a tunnel space would again enclosing people I get a more ambition because remember I was enclosing like my class right my my my, my students and then I want to enclose you all <laughs> this all of you can get inside this piece all of you here all of you can get inside because the piece is proposed to be 60 some feet long you know so this is a proposal and I calculate the estimate material remember you asked me how to plan this is all planned out you know he says, he says about $3,000 material and a tent. <laughs> so you're always out of the budget. Uh, but each opening corresponds to the lamp on the ground so that the light will come through the opening. So source material, I couldn't get anything. Chip 2x4 would be too expensive as I saw, you know, saw, the, saw the estimate. So I end up to go to a nearby place there where there's a guy who cut kind of logs that are fell on the ground in Boyd, Maryland. Boyd, which is not that far from me, I drove by, I saw the, you know, you saw the exit there. And then we cut tree material. The tree already dead, you know, not live trees, so they were there and no use for it, so we can get it inexpensively just to pay for the labor for him to saw me into planks. And then cut into planks, and then cut into thousands of planks, and just go you real quick now, and then build it outdoor because I don't have an indoor studio that large. It's longer than here. <laughs> so I built a section, you know, beside people I hired to help, but also my, my wife and my daughter get to work. <laughs> they, they don't want to be artists. <laughs> <laughs> so built in sections, and then this is, you know, the fraction of the, the whole one-sixth of it, right? And then build it, eventually become the long piece. So all of you can go inside the tunnel at the same time. So... And, and then to become more personal, why I want to do that is my, it's kind of symbolic of my personal journey who came to this country to chase art as my career. Where it's a long journey, it's a very difficult, you, have, you can get out anytime, those openings, you can just quit. But you say, well, I want to go on. At the same time, I want to share the, uh, the ongoing discussion about, you know, the border between separating us, USA to Mexico. So this is based on the contour line of the map of USA and Mexican border. If you look, look carefully, that outline actually traced from planned in my drawing that was the contour, the whole contour right here from, from all the way to the contour from San Diego to Del Rey to whatever uh, was the uh, uh, 
uh, the, the other, you know, all the way in in Delray, I think. Yeah, something. Anyway, some photography that I enjoy seeing the cloud kind of mixed with the texture of the wood. The wood smell really good. Pine smell really good. You all know what pine smells. So, but I this time again, remember I like the bark of the tree. This particular pine tree has a lot of what they call lower extension. I call them years. There are a lot of years, you know, out in the lower part on here. That's very textural. Then the piece was built in uh, Workhouse Art Center in Virginia, where the director, like a guy like Hori, said, you are allow, you're okay to build it here, but you have to show it here. So I had to show the piece there, the photo I show it here, and this is the Workhouse Art Center in Virginia. So I have the space to build it, but then I have to show it. Remember the space I was asked to show? It was in the ground space, underground space, in the concrete space. So I have to move this guy to another museum space right here you can see moving with cranes because the door of the of the entry of the loading dock cannot fit these guys in there so we have to kind of crane it in down one by one we start at 6 a.m with a team of five and then with the guy with the crane truck and then until it was a spring break when march it's not snowing at about five six o'clock and then everybody left, including the museum staff. They all left. And only five of us who are in the crew, the only, then one guy left, and only four guys left. And uh, continue to drop this down until it is all in there. Then it's just moving. So the next day, we get another crew. These are all my UM former students, students, current students, grad students who can, I can hire. I do say hire, I pay them you know, reasonable ages to help me because they become their part-time job as well. So, and also they help me out and I need, you know, I need their help as well. We both benefit from each other and then put them back together and uh, the opening. You, anybody recognize her, right? She's our former first lady, Mrs. Hogan. Yeah. It's nice, nice meeting her inside the tunnel, isn't it? <laughs> She came, yeah, respectfully, she came to the opening. So, so this is how they were, how I was put together with, with section, six, uh, 55 sections, 62 feet in total length. So each layer, I put my date and time, I put it there, so it's like a, you know, like a prisoner, you know. <laughs> <laughs> One more day, I call the piece called Escape, is symbolically, I escape, you know, where I came from, where they don't really have much opportunity for art, to came to this country to pursue art, and that is called Escape, yeah, so yeah, this is me, my crew. They're all happy working with me, they love to work with me at the same time, you know, <laughs> we're all happy together, so it's good. And then this is the contour with the, sh you, know, I, you know, light photography generated by my sculpture as well. These are just nice photo of the silhouette of the sculpture on the ground, the daytime. Yeah, I love to have this, you know, this love to show you this piece here. Then, then people peek in the, the inside, the light coming through. Remember the light coming through? They were there. I did not build the lamp. The architecture was part of the lamp already there. So, so it get darker. The piece got glowing from the inside, and then the lamps. Yeah. So it's a journey, but a, maybe not a big one, but a small journey. But at the same time, you experience the interior exterior which is one of my pursuit remember i talked about interior exterior in my sculpture and the long tunnel and then you see the glass reflection make the tunnel even double as long so uh, a lot of wood used this particular tall part that people call it cathedral and uh, my nephew used it as a backdrop for his engagement invitation and uh, many pe wedding parties went there and spent hours taking pictures. The photographer said, any angle you take is good. <laughs> <laughs> Kids love it. And this is a bonus. This is, you know, photography on a rainy day, which is a bad day for visiting the sculpture, but the reflection on the ground become a bonus, right? The reflection on the ground is just beautiful. Look like a fire but it's water, but it's liquid, you know, all that. And the reflection on the ground, the texture, seeing the landscape kind of recreate on the, on, on graphically on the ground as well, so. And then the, the third live of this piece was now, the piece was out to show at the Smithsonian Garden outside the National 
History of American History, National Museum of American History, on 12 and Constitution, you know. You know where it is, right? 14 Constitution. No, it's, it's just, a bit, I was there up in 19 to now. Just put, just, uh, they just remove it. Yeah. Because these wood are not made to last forever. So they will start the theories. People take down the luggage and take photo. I kind of like that. Uh, so right next near the Smithsonian, as you might all know. Yeah. Where's it going next? Huh? Where's it going next? Uh, no, no more. We removed it. That's it. No more. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. So uh, the piece is big enough for people to go through with uh, wheelchairs, all that. So, so we did not do a straight line because the land is not providing that kind of a straight line. So we do it in curve. So, so I call it to change the name because no longer my personal expression about the tunnel escape. We call it the arches of life. So it's a different name. So arches. Again, I told you this is my, my biggest fan. <laughs> the young kids, they love it. They're just going through it. Uh, okay, another pet tall sculpture real quick that I do at the same exhibition during the uh, Kassan Art Center. It's the tallest sculpture ever made, which is again, this time I say, how can I make a tunnel that deep enough for you to look really, really through a long distance to the skylight? Sounds easy. It takes about a year and a half to build. So this is again a graduation of Bach outside and then gradually become what I call natural material become man-made. Oh, let's see. This piece go all the way to 40 feet up. So you can see the exhibition there. At the same, uh, the same exhibition at the, uh, uh, the, the Arches is uh, the Smithsonian Garden asked me to propose to do a piece for the title called Habitat. Habitat is to promote awareness of how we should protect our environment and the habitat so that you know, we can keep our planet green and alive and for future survival, which we are having big issues with the, with the earth right now in global warming, all that. So this is the site I chose, and then I propose to do a mushroom piece. Why mushroom is a piece is a symbolic using mushroom because it does break down organic matter and feed to the plants to grow, you know, regrow our, 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 our environment and the, the plants and supporting the nutrients of the trees. And then also it's also a great network for the underground uh, between the plants and uh, all the all the uh, grass and trees and all that, so uh, so it was uh, so it is my proposal sketches about, and they accept that proposal and I start to build that again. They like to use the tree material that are fell on the museum ground, so we kind of recycling what is fell on the ground or cut down on the museum and reuse the material. So these are the logs they collected, cutting from A and Space, the, the American Indian, and uh, natural, I think two of them from natural history, where, you know, where the dinosaurs are outside. And then, uh, so the elm, birch trees, oak trees, and, uh, uh, and cypress on there. So one favor they did is again, you know, instead of they will have the work playing, you know, playing down, or not playing down, it's the way it worked, uh, 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 sawmill down to the plant so that I can build it. It took me 10 trips to bring the wood to my studio each time because I cannot house all this wood in my studio. So I build it, bring the planks in one trip at a time, 10 times, and then use different species, mix it together, and build this giant mushroom piece. It was the diff one of the most difficult piece to build. Yeah. Because there's no measurement to calculate. You just have to judge by eye to make that curve Right, small, very deep curve, and then make a giant mushroom tom on top. So, uh, so the trees again, I mix with bark and cut so that you can isolate the texture for you to see and enjoy. And measure. and then this is the interior of the piece. I get because the piece cannot move as one big giant, right? Because the crane cannot come inside the museum, come inside my studio. So I had to build them all in sections. 
I get confused inside. I really get confused which is separate what. So I have to color code them. So that the red, you go to the red, yellow go to the yellow, so they can separate and join them together. I couldn't tell you, I don't want to do it again, but it was really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> it was difficult. So put it together, you know where the monument is, across the street, you know, where the uh, National Museum of African American History, and build that in section. There were about two big trucks and 15 people helped to move it and construct it together. I used that joint, right? So there's like a finger joint basically locked together so they won't move. Yeah. And then their inner metal structure to support it. And there it is. Take it at springtime 2019. It's about 12 and a half feet tall, 11 by 11 feet. Weigh 9,000 pounds, a lot of weight. So there are educational materials that people can share about the protection of the habitat and why it's so important about the mushroom called Life Underground. And this is a view of the pieces together with the museum, which I'm honored to have that opportunity to be in a very, one of the prime, most visited, most visited site in the country or in the world. Uh, I could stop here. Yeah, more? Well, okay. <laughs> okay, this is a place I went to uh, uh, France for residency in 2018. There's a country, uh, place called, uh, uh, I can't remember, I will come back up. But anyway, there's a, this, this uh, uh, small city, small town, a village, is made of this uh, stone building, almost like the way I build sculptures. So I was really impressed by that. But uh, to make it quick, uh, I was working in that town for about a month and a half. And then one, ex one piece I did was, uh, after building all this sculpture, I collect all these sawdust, you know, I created, and the scrap pieces I created. So I creating, a kind of a, like a maze structure on the floor, on the art gallery for exhibitions. So they are a little bit color and all that. So what happened is that uh, amazing. Next day I discovered this on my piece. <laughs> I say, who would that be? It's not a human being, you know. The, the guy. And I couldn't tell, but he's not a, he's a rat or mouse. It will, it will, the tail will whack it all, all together. But uh, it's very really clean. They make real beautiful patterns, you know. So you know exactly, exactly where it came from, where to get out. It was uh, so, yeah. So uh, it was just one of the most things. You, you, you know, sometimes I collaborate with, the, with, with you know, nature, but this is collaborating with a guy I talk to on the ground world. I say, this is, I think, guess, who, guess it was. It was a lizard. Yeah. 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 So, so right after that, I proposed to make a, make a giant uh, maze sculpture with that become large scale, right? Small scale idea turned into a bigger scale. And then proposed for a space like this in the National Building Museum. Ever, anybody been there? So one of those amazing building, I have to say, architecture have done that I mean, represent. So I want to, 20 years ago I was there, I wanted to have a sculpture in there. So I proposed and they accept that maze sculpture idea. So I proposed it with this, a drawing that I did in the plane and uh, Eventually, make mapped out the 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 the, 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 the map, the, the location of it. Uh, this time, I ended up using two by four because I didn't have enough tree material to do all that. But again, the budget issue and time, and so two by four would be a faster way to go. And so I plan out the size of each one. So it's about 28 of this section, and some are columns, some are curves, some are corners. Build it in my studio in sections. And then I have books in them, books that are representing the knowledge we are in the museum and how we collect information from the past and then translate to the next generation to keep the information sharing going on. But then you cannot read these things. You cannot read them, you're going to put it out. In library, you can put it out, but you can just read the title. And this one, Woman Lead the Way, which is a big contemporary title right now. So, uh, so uh, what the title do is for people to navigate their way through the different paths 
in the maze. It's like a you know like a like a like an egg hunt. So you're given an instruction with four different passages, and each one will have a title somewhere to have those keywords in the book. Then you will walk through a certain way to get out. So uh, you know, like that, dogs don't lie. <laughs> don't tell dogs, right? Okay. So this is the puzzle put together real quick, and uh, you see it all put together real quickly. And, and two big trucks that I took care of, you know, two big trucks with, you know, eight people working t four days in a row. Uh, they give you time. They, I don't have a lot of time. You have to get in and get out because the other event is coming. So uh, uh, this is during the process. When the lights hit it, it come in a golden kind of a light to the wood, which is I like, and put it together. She just uh, graduated this time, the one person on the left, she's graduating MFA right now, this, this year. And uh, so we had to test it out with the, we have to have wheelchair uh, access to all of them. So make sure all the, all the we testing with the, with the routes, with the information we were given, and then with the wheelchair to go through it. So eventually, I still really feel com uncomfortable. This building is so overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly powerful as an image. So I'm trying to be <laughs> complimenting <laughs> to exist in a, in a, in a weird way. So, so you can see hallway, you know, they used to have the, some, re you know, resemblance of the Indian drillings, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, they're using natural material. I'm using, you know, man-made material here. The books are there. Uh, collected from donation from the library to people who give out books. Yeah. I love, remember, you know, those inter interior spaces, you know, looking through. This is at the opening to see the people kind of interact with it. So you can want to encase en 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 more, engulf more people. You just have to make the piece bigger, but never big enough, right? <laughs> uh, parents helping the kids to go through those uh, routes. And uh, hard for the, including myself, the senior, to bend down low to read the, the thing. Uh, it is hard. The kids love to get inside. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a really interactive piece. Uh, it was there for two months, whole summer months, so the parents bring the kids there and they enjoy it. They don't even ask for permission, they just go right in. <laughs> uh, somebody asked about this, the piece. This is a piece not far from here in Rockville, outdoor in our yard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pine and Rose, you know, out there. It was installed in 2007. Yeah, real quick. I know time is up. I'm gonna finish with this. Uh, this was uh, the brown color. It was thought this wood is made to last long because this engineer in Norway they take out the moisture molecule, remove the molecules from the wood, and inject with a bio-based liquid to make it solid so that the water cannot get in. Water cannot get in. It will not fungus. Fungus cannot grow, which is mushroom cannot grow and then we'll not eat the wood so it will last for there. So this is night time. And you can see it in real so. Alright, if you just drive by there, take a look and say hello. Uh, quickly just a quick portfolio. These are the pieces that you might swim into downtown. The two by four pieces that like, uh nineteenth street. I have eight of these different ones there. Uh, are they up now? They are still up there forever. They are supposed to be permanent, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are uh, on 19 and now they are from M to K, there were eight of them on different corners. They are made to complement the rain gardens, which is again, about keeping our city green, is p using rain, rain garden to purify the street water, which is dirty, go back to the river. So, so using the sculpture to highlight so that people read the text and understand the educational component of the rain gardens. Okay, so as the real quick earlier pieces that I want to stop here now. Any questions? These are pieces I do indoor and small and really small like this.
So people say, do you do small work? Yes. Do you use color? Sometimes I do. I have a yeah. Um, on the exterior pieces, how do you join them? They were simply joined by overlapping. Overlapping. So, so no rods? No. Yeah, the outdoor piece are with screw, the indoor pieces with glue. And with uh, pressure, you know, I call lamination with the uh, tightness. Uh. So the pieces that you um, had to dismantle, yeah. I mean, uh, the pieces there, we, they are really too old, will be, you know, cannot be reused again. So it's not like, I mean, but they can still be maybe composted somewhere since they're wood, or no? They will, yeah, they, they can turn into mulches, mm -hmm. you know, or, but the Smithsonian guy, and I told them, I, 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 I'm going to have a sad feeling when I lose a piece, yeah. so I can't be there, so I do them a favor, just do it while I'm not there. Oh, so okay. they, so they, they, I don't even tell me where they go. So it's not, oh yeah, I was just wondering. I would like to burn them, but they'll become a fire acid, mm. so oh, big. Okay. Yeah. It'll become really a big, no, a campfire, to bring a burning a house. And putting them through a shredder and, and becoming something else? Or yeah, but the danger with them, I would have screws in them. Oh. So they might worry about ruining the machine when the, especially the machine that had metal part, they yeah, just yeah. don't like that. But anyway, um, uh, how to throw away pieces. Yeah, the problem by some of these big pieces, I, 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 I've been keeping it for, for 20 years, but think about the mortgage it costs yeah. just to store it. So it's not a good idea, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's hard, to, hard, to, hard to get that off your thing. Uh, to mention a few things about choosing the process, right? I, 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 well, just the first thing is we are doing visual art. We are visual art. The first thing that strike that I screen first is what it looks, the striking look, you know, the visual quality of the initial impact it does to me. Then I select that first. Then, then I said again, you know, I look at pieces that get me, you know, want me to look longer. And then I get and get, when I engage, I see more things, you know, texture, color, uh, dealing with light and darkness, attention to details or the thing. Then some of the pieces have specialized, have idea beyond just painting a landscape, capturing a moment of, of what we see, but at the same time has an idea more. And then hopefully I look for something new, but uh, it's hard to find uh, something new because it's the art world. We make so many things that other people are sharing us now. So, uh, you know, uh, and then quality. I try to be, become, have a variety of, of pieces rather than one theme, which is no theme, right? So that makes it more diverse. You can see abstract work to really realistic work, you know, to, to a work that have really interesting idea about hanging, you know, oysters, you know. So the, the word pun is there using a hanger, you know, and also we hang paintings. So kind of I like that word pun. So those are little special things that, that give me as a, a special taste it. And there's a personal lightness of certain kind of material, mixing, all that. So, yeah, so that is hard, but then once you give me a number, they have to screen it down to that number. All right. Any other questions? Have you done a coffee table book for us yet? Mm -hmm. A coffee table book of your life's work? A uh, coffee table? What if you see that? A coffee table? No, a book. No, a book. No, a book. Yeah, I have. I have a book of. of oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are, it's like a like a like a book of, of pictures of my work. Something. Yeah. Uh, they are they are they are books in the past, but they are catalog. These are you know, books of my work. Oh, nice. Yeah, and these are catalog of the the talk about the escape, the whole process, the the music, You know, the American Casson Art Center oh, yeah. came up with that. And the sculpture magazine uh, exhibition of uh, uh, the work that you know about twelve pages of work that because I was selected as the outstanding educator of the year, so that was a nice little honor. But they also give you pages about your work. So. Are these available for? I have to order them, but I'll be glad to order one for you. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Well, I want to take a second and announce the winners of the exhibition. Um, one of the big draws, of course, for some of these kinds of shows is, is having a winner, having some sort of monetary you know, award. And so we like, we like to provide that opportunity for artists um, who are often pouring in their time, but also their own resources. So um, let me find our winners here. Okay, if, if you're one of the people that won an award, if you wouldn't mind, you can stand up for a second, and then after the talk, if you'll just come see me and we'll take care of some logistics. But, um, and we'd love to get a picture of you as well. Um, so we do an honorable mention, um, a, a third place, a second place, and then a grand prize winner for the exhibition. The honorable mention is John K. Checks Hanging Oysters. <laughs> Third place is um, Spiral Rocket by Jared Hadfield. <laughs> Second place is Residue by Joseph uh, Gerlach, or Gerlach. <laughs> and the grand prize winner is Memory Window by Tani uh, Tax. Ta I'm going to butcher the last name. Tax area. I know Tani. <laughs> I know Tani's pieces through there, um, and yeah, it's take, take some time to walk through and see what we've got going on, and let us know if you have any questions or need anything. Thank you all so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Boone. Can we give it up for Boone? Thank you.